All right, guys, I have been spending a lot of time in one of Alaska's many different terrains or biomes, and today I thought I would talk about survival essentials for survival essentials for high alpine environments. Now, the reason why I wanted to talk about high alpine as its own unique biome, of course, Alaska does have many biomes in its uh, kind of wide plethora, but uh, the high alpine is particularly applicable to a lot of people in Canada and in northern parts of America or the US or the continental lower 48, whatever you want to call it. So this is a pretty applicable kind of biome that you might find yourself in. And it does have, um, it does have its own kind of unique specializing for survival kit and survival essentials. Now, of course, in survival, the core needs for the human body never change. You know, you need to keep your core temperature around 98.6 degrees with the use of shelter and fire. You need to have water, food, and, you know, just the essentials to life. So, you know, of course that never changes, but there are some things that you can carry that are more well adapted to the high alpine. So, Let's talk about that now. As always, before we get into it, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon and Instagram for more content. Now, let's talk about it. Okay, so first and foremost, uh, one of the things that I always carry in kind of just the general gear set is going to be, first off, the PSK or Personal Survival Kit. Now, this is a general speaking kind of fail-safe that I always carry on me. I have plenty of videos talking about this and the contents of this, but essentially I'm carrying everything from fire starting methods, shelter, water recovery, water purification. Uh, you know, I have my personal locator beacon on the bottom of this. I have a abbreviated first aid kit here in this little pocket, uh, in this little pocket here, and just generalized survival equipment. And of course, all of that would be important in the high alpine, but a PSK is a very kind of jack of all trades, master of none. This is where I, what I carry in every environment for those basic human needs for survival. And while I do think, um, as we'll talk more about shelter in high alpine, I do think having three mylar blankets, which is what I have in here, would be more useful than not. Of course, mylar blankets are not the most optimal for shelter building building and shelter as a whole. And of course, paired with the PSK, I carry a saw, a capable folding saw, something like my Silky Gomboy or this Baco Laplander. I carry a saw or I carry a knife and a hatchet as well. Hatchet and the saw are going to be the workhorses for processing wood wherever you are. And of course, the saw and hatchet may not be the most applicable to the high alpine, but they're still going to be important to have regardless to where you're at. And of course, the knife. Now the knife is going to change a little bit. Usually in survival situations in Alaska, especially, I recommend a larger knife. But in the high alpine, you can actually get away with running smaller, lighter weight knives for the fact that most realistically, you're not going to be doing a whole lot with wood processing tools as a whole, either your saw, your hatchet, or your knife. Just because in high alpine, and I'm trying to roll in pictures here uh, or GoPro footage from my excursions, uh, there's just not a lot of trees in the high alpine. So when you get up there, there will be trees, but they're scattered, they're small, they're shrubby, and they're not really going to be the highest quality for harvesting for fire or harvesting for shelter craft. So a lot of what you're going to need in high alpine environments is you're going to have to bring in your shelter and you're going to have to source your water because of course, being on a mountain or a large hill, you are really not going to have great access most of the time to water or cover. Now, of course, there are exceptions to this. I have been down in the Eagle River area and down in the Matsu Valley as a whole, their high alpine is a little bit better than up here in central Alaska because they just get more rainfall and more precipitation. So they have greater growth of trees and they also have greater access to lakes in high alpine environments. So it's a little bit different down there, but by and large, most of your high alpine is going to be very sparse in cover and very sparse in water. So that's where this system really seeks to cover. So of course, like I said, those are the basics that I would always recommend, but there's a few other things that will make it a little 
make your survival odds a little bit better. So the first one is going to be actually a jacket. And like I said, being in high alpine environments, you're going to notice that there's a very low, very sparse amount of cover. And that cover is usually very far from optimal. I mean, we're talking trees that are very spindly and very weak. Uh, you're not going to really be able to manufacture them into things like a lean-to for sure. So having a base layer or having a frontline layer of having something like a jacket. Now, this is my Arcteryx uh, Beta AR, but so this is my Arcteryx Beta AR, but what you really want to focus on is having a strong, robust shell jacket. Something like this Beta AR, something like an Alpha SV. Those are usually what I run from Arcteryx, but there are plenty of good companies out there that make a solid shell jacket. You just really want something that is a good first line layer that you can put on your body to help cover most of you. And of course, most importantly, your core from the cold and of course, precipitation. I will say uh, there is a funny way that high alpine environments usually do track, attract high, or they usually attract precipitation. And even though that precipitation may not accumulate into things like lakes, it usually drains down into river drainages or just drainage, valley drainages as a whole. But you do usually encounter quite a bit of precipitation in your mountains and hills. So having something that has a solid layer of wind protection and water protection will be very important. Now, in addition to wearing something like a jacket as your first line of shelter, you're also going to want to focus on shelter options themselves and I have a couple things here this one obviously is not the best but what I do like about having a nice solid canvas uh, drop cloth is helping form a layer for you to lay down on or if you do have access to enough uh, things like spruce or pine boughs you can use something like a heavy-duty canvas drop cloth to make a form of a kind of bare bones or rustic uh, mattress where you can throw down a lot of your cushioning um, pine boughs through this over top of it and what that does is two things one this drop cloth so long as they're treated properly like this one is a tin cloth um, they're going to be water resistant and pretty waterproof and also they're going to keep you from getting poked by those boughs of course the second one of those is a little bit arbitrary you know if you get poked it's not too big of a deal but if you do get wet you do want to be very conscious of that so that's the primary reason why i like having a drop cloth is it just gives you a very simple very effective layer between you and the wet ground whether you're sitting or laying or trying to sleep next to that you're going to want to focus on having a solid piece of cover now this right here is a really simple pretty cheap tarp and i'll probably leave the link to this on amazon in the description below these are not the most durable or most crazy tarps uh, you know certainly there are more durable ones but this is i believe made by grabber and it's two-sided like there's a mylar side to it um and then there's this outside kind of tarp side to it. So it's very durable, but also does reflect heat. And you can use these actually quite effectively if you nestle yourself into some of the pine trees. Now, once again, the pine trees that you'll find in high alpine environments are not going to be super robust and super heavy duty, but you can usually make a simple A-frame or a very simple shelter for survival using something like a tarp like this and then having something like a ground cloth. And and the greatest thing about these two items right here is they really improve your ability to form and make a shelter, but they're also still quite small, not super lightweight, but quite small to enough to throw in something like a day pack or a sling pack like this. And then you still have adequate ability to form a shelter should you need to hunker down for whatever reason. Okay, lastly, you're going to want to focus on water procurement. Now, like I said, this is will vary probably the most when it comes to high uh when it comes to high alpine environments, because I have been to different mountains and such, and they have lakes, you know, very close to them. And there's actually lakes in mountains in some areas. So your ability to get water and your access to water may vary. I've also been to some high alpine environments where, you know, there's a glacier fed river or creek or stream that you can drink right out of. And I've also done that before. So the water, por the water portion, while still very important, will vary, uh, but I think it is a very smart idea to have something like either a Grail Geopress, which is what this is, or something like a Titanium Vargo Bot. Now, the reason why I'm stressing more of the Grail Geopress is, as I mentioned earlier, 
regardless to what environment you're in, even if there is good access to water, there's almost always gonna be low access to burnable wood. And so I tend to favor things like the Grail Geopress because it does a very good job at filtering water. But of course you don't need to heat or boil your water with this. Uh, so that's why I tend to lean more towards something like a Grail Geopress or some type of water filtration system, as opposed to running something like a Vargo Bot where it might be good for catching water but how do you really can uh, clean the water and how do you decontaminate it so that's uh, why i end up leaning a little bit more towards something like a grail as opposed to a vargo bot in that type of situation and so of course those are uh, the big things of course fire is also another thing that should definitely be considered Fire is another thing that should be considered if possible, but usually your access to firewood will be quite low. So a lot of times what this is gonna translate for survival is you should be very conscious of how wet you're, you are because you will not likely be able to warm or dry yourself. So having solid layers like jackets that are very waterproof and very wind resistant and having things that can go a long way for sheltering you, yourself will be very important for high alpine survival. <clears throat> So these are some of the survival essentials if you consider, if you spend a lot of time out in high alpine environments, these are definitely some of the essentials that I carry with me regularly and that I definitely recommend that you guys check out and consider fielding and running with yourself. Now, I will say too, another thing about high alpine environments, especially in the summer, they're not too bad, once again, so long as you're tracking, you know, your ability to intake food and water and your ability to stay dry. Aside from that high alpine environments aren't really too too hard or too bad to live in and of course the nice thing about being in a high alpine environment is if you need to take shelter from the wind if things like your jacket become compromised you can always head down into a basin and or drainage and get more shelter from the wind, more shelter from the environment. Now, one of the big disadvantages in a survival situation is if you decide to go down into a basin or drainage, of course, survival efforts or uh, rescue and uh, rescue and location efforts will be much harder. It's harder for things like helicopters and aircraft to navigate their ways down into basins, drainages, valleys to find you. So if you are down in the the deepest part of a drainage is going to be much more challenging for them to find you. So that's some of the reason why you might, if at all possible, want to seek toughing it out on the top of the uh, on top of the hill, on top of the mountain, within reason. Obviously, you don't necessarily want to be at the peak of the mountain, but you know, being somewhere in the high alpine area will give you much greater ability to be spotted, to be seen, to be found. Especially if you're using things like high vis orange, um, you are going to stand a greater chance of being found. So, while not a hard and fast rule, and while you can certainly go down into the valley, just be considerate of your survival objectives. Okay guys, that's about all I have to say for survival essentials, tips, tricks for the high alpine uh, that I work in in Alaska. As always guys, God bless and I'm out.